Hey gang, we're in here. Welcome on back to the cave as we are carrying on with our revisitation of Metal Gear Solid for the PS1 from 1998. So in the last episode, we already started this fight with a cyborg ninja, but we were not able to really capitalize. We got about halfway through before he beat us, and now we are having to pick it up and try and get through it this time. Now, between the last episode and this one, I did say I was going to go out and try and farm some more uh, rations. I was able to find one. There's one in here which will give me two. And hopefully that will be enough to allow us to get through this boss battle. But we won't know for sure until we get it going. So let's get it going. Make me feel alive. Usually we want our chaff grenades, and we've got a full complement of them. Get this ration up really quick. Nope, but I can certainly make your day a lot less comfortable. Oh, he did not just make mincemeat of me there. I have no idea, but I'm glad he did. I still have grenades over there. And the trick is to wait until all the chaff is gone out of the air. Because if you make the mistake of dropping one chaff grenade while one is already active, it won't do anything to them. You'll essentially have wasted it. My two rations, which I'm not really happy about. There we go. Pick up a few more grenades here. I gotta find them really fast. There we go. That's helpful. Now at this point, if I wanted to, I think I could engage in hand-to-hand -hand with him, but I'm going to try to whittle him down just a little bit more before I do that, but I should hold on to him. some of my chaff grenades in case I need them for the end again, which I don't remember if I do or not. There we go. Good. Now we can fight this warrior hand to hand. It is the basis of all combat. Only a fool trusts his life to a weapon. 
So now we have to remember it is very much a stick and move sort of situation. Where if you hit him once. Or if you're lucky enough to get a three punch combo in. Like that, then get out of the way. Because he can cover so much ground with his attacks. So now we're going to play hide and seek with him. the distortion is but then he gets that one good shot in your toast so we have to try this one more time But this is very much the get good section of this game. Because if you can get past the ninja, then now make me feel it. Make me feel alive again. A lot of the other bosses and a lot of the other battles that will come after this are not nearly as difficult. But it's a combination of the tedium of this fight. And the length of it is what really ticks a lot of people off. Snake, you can't defeat me with a weapon like that. And even having the machine gun available to me, all I keep thinking about is uh, Hicks's line from the movie Aliens. Remember, short controlled bursts. Because there's no point in dumping the entire clip into him. Ow. So now I definitely have to go to get that last ration out of here and give myself another chaff grenade. Ah! Come on. I may not make it through this fight only because he's already hit me twice. I've already used one of my two rations. And that sword he has does so much damage. Realistically, he only has to hit me once or twice from here on out, and I've got nothing to beat him with.
All right, let's see if he comes at me. Good. Now we can there we go. And I can't skip through this again, so I apologize for the redundancy of it. Better to fight him out in open areas where you've got more maneuverability. As opposed to in tight corridors. If you fight him in a phone booth, you're really not helping yourself. Still on that side of the cubicle. I'm here, so where is he? Oh, when he hits me with one shot, I'm dead again. try this one more time and hopefully we can finally get through this. But you don't think that, you know, 25, 30 years ago that fights like this were this involved and this hard. A lot of people think more in terms of this is stuff that we had happen in more modern games. But make me feel alive again. This is the reality of it. Snake, you can't defeat me with a weapon like that. You have to remember, it's a matter of patience where... When he's talking, it limits your ability to access the windows and pull everything up. The other thing that comes in handy is using the D-pad to be able to swap through your items. rather than trying to use the control stick. You have a little bit more functional control with the D-pad, but you don't think about it, because why would you need to worry about it when you have the control stick handy? Because it's been so long since I've played this game, I freely admit that his attack pattern takes more getting used to. Not that it's random, but it's a matter of timing more than anything.
That time I don't think I actually hit it. Should be able to just engage with hand to hand from here. Good. Now we can fight with warriors. Hand to hand. All right. Set up part two, and the good news is I haven't had to use a single ration yet. So. Stay clear of his general attacks. Ooh, like that. But he's only hit me once. He's gonna vanish again, and now we know he's gonna hide oh, next to the cubicle, at least he should. Nope, he's gonna sit right there, so all I gotta do is come over. starting to short out a little bit. I've been waiting for the pain. Oh, and he came up right behind me and hit me. And I didn't even think to use a ration. Oh, that was the best chance I had to get him. And he gave me one shot and basically broke my neck. So here we go with round five, I think. Now, make me feel it. Make me feel alive again. And already I'm not in good shape because he already hit me once. I don't know if the SOCOM does more damage than the machine gun, but because I have more bullets, I'm more inclined to use the FinMOS anyway. Plus there's more FAMAS bullets available for me to pick up. There he is. Oh. And you gotta be quick because if you get to him before he crouches, then you can do damage. There we go. Now, this part's getting a lot easier. It's just a matter of. Consistently being mobile and being aware of where he is. When the grenades go off. I 
get right up behind him and I'm loading a couple of bullets into him. Maybe I wouldn't, but I remember having played these games before and used a whole lot of weapons to take down a whole lot of bosses. Where is he? See, this time I totally missed him. Engage him in hand to hand combat. I was worried that he was going to get me with one swipe of that sword really fast. Yep, I'm aware of that. You've only said it a couple of times by now. Go to hide and seek mode. Part three. Okay, now I'm just gonna be able to stay away from him as he comes in and tries to hit me with. There we go. Hurt me more. 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 And that's where being around here is gonna be helpful. Now I can stay a bit clear out of his way. The feel of battle, the clashing of bone and sinew. Oof. Because he's almost gone. Anywhere 
actions left? No, I don't. Okay. So it's gonna come down to this. So as long as I know he's going to jump once, get out of the way. I've actually got to hit him. Nope. There we go. Finally, it only took the majority of this episode, but we finally put him down. Do you remember me now? Can't be. You were killed in Zanzibar. Officially going into bang your head mode. Now, I'm not surprised if he's more than a little wiped out as our boy Snake. Gray Fox. Colonel, that ninja is Gray Fox. No doubt about it. Ridiculous. You of all people should know he died in Zanzibar. No. He should have died, but he didn't. What? It happened before I joined Foxhound's medical staff. They were using a soldier for their gene therapy experiments. I never heard that. It happened right after you retired. My predecessor, Dr. Clark, was in charge. Dr. Clark? Yes. He started the gene therapy project. And where is he now? He was killed in an explosion in his lab two years ago. So what about this soldier? Apparently, for their test subject, they decided to use the body of a soldier who was recovered after the fall of Zanzibar. And that was Gray Fox. But he was already dead. Yes. But they revived him. They fitted him with the prototype exoskeleton and kept him drugged for four years while they experimented on him like a plaything. Today's genome soldiers were born from those experiments. That's the sickest thing I ever heard. They used him to test all sorts of gene therapy techniques. Naomi, why didn't you tell us about this sooner? Because it's confidential information. Of course it is. Is that the only reason? Naomi, what happened to Gray Fox after that? The record says he died in the explosion. I see. But even if that ninja is Gray Fox, the question is, why? From what I could tell, he didn't know who he was. Are you saying that he's just a mindless robot? So I'm Gray sure. Fox, to the uninitiated, he's intent on fighting me to the death. was the again. first primary it. contact you have to so find in the again. original Metal Gear game. His name Until is Frank Yeager. And he was essentially the man who recruited you into not. Foxhound and was the only wants. soldier in the ranks to have achieved the title of Fox. And then in Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake, How long are you gonna he ends up there? siding with Big Boss in his new fortress domain of Zanzibar, no, where you have to fight first wrong. him and then ultimately Big Boss Hello? again and kill them with? both. So where Come this story on, picks out. up is that we've we always thought that Frank forever. Yeager had died in Zanzibar. Turns out what they did was they took his body, somehow resuscitated it, converted it into that ninja, yeah, and that is now who Gray Fox right. is. 
You know me? I heard about you from Meryl. Oh, so you're here to rescue me. Sorry, but no. There's something that I've got to do first. Oh, well, at least you're not one of them. So now we're introduced to Hal Emmerich, huh. who Great is part. one of the project leaders for Metal Gear Rex, oh, and I'm he okay. is a character who we have a lot of involvement with well, that's all, over the remaining about. Metal Gear Solid games, going all the way through something. 2, 3, 4, I need and 5. About Metal Gear. Huh? Metal Gear? Yeah. What's Metal Gear really designed for? It's a mobile TMD. It's designed to shoot down nuclear missiles. Only for defensive purposes, of course. Uh -huh. I already know that Metal Gear is nothing but a nuclear-equipped walking death mobile. Nuclear? W what are you talking about? The terrorists are planning to use Metal Gear to launch a nuclear missile. You telling me you didn't know? They're gonna put a dismantled warhead into Metal Gear's TMD missile module? Wrong. From the beginning, the purpose of this exercise was to test Metal Gear's nuclear launch capability using a dummy nuclear warhead. The terrorists are just continuing the work you started. No, you're wrong. I heard it directly from your boss, Baker. No. A nuclear missile on Rex? So you really didn't know? No. All the armament was built by a separate department, and the president personally supervised the final assembly of the main unit. President Baker? It sounds like a perfectly yeah. laid out case of compartmentalization exactly if I ever Rex heard with. one. I, I only know it's equipped with a Vulcan cannon, a laser, and a rail gun. And that rail gun is what they're going to use to launch the nuke with. Although, how you would launch a missile with a rail gun would be exactly what's designed yeah. to be. It uses magnets to fire bullets at extremely high velocities. The technology was originally developed for the SDI system and, and later scrapped. We were successful in miniaturizing it in a joint venture between if you call that miniaturized. and National Labs. The railgun is on Rex's right arm. Considering how big Rex is, that is not a miniaturized railgun. Sure you're not forgetting a something. miniaturized railgun would be something you would be seeing in, like, oh, I don't know, an old Arnold Schwarzenegger would call the racer. Are you saying it was originally meant to carry nuclear missiles? Yeah, but that's not all, I think. If Metal Gear fired only standard nuclear missiles, then they should already have all the practical data they need. No. Could it be? Yes, could. Metal Gear's co-developer, Rivermore National Labs, was working on a new type of nuclear weapon. They were using Nova and NIF laser nuclear fusion testing equipment and supercomputers. So they developed a new type of nuclear weapon in a VR testing lab, huh? Yes, but you can't use virtual data on a battlefield. They would need actual launch data. These are some of the supercomputers. If you link these, you can test everything in a virtual environment. But it's all just theoretical. So this exercise was designed to test the real thing. What did our president do? If the terrorists launched Something that, that he thing... wouldn't likely be impeached for. Damn. Let alone if it went to court, judging Damn. by the current state of affairs. I'm such a fool. It's all my fault. The truth is, my grandfather was part of the Manhattan Project. He suffered with the guilt for the rest of his life. And I appreciate the fact that they used declassified and my father, footage from the 1950s atomic 6th, bomb tests. The day of the Hiroshima bomb. God's got a sense of humor, all right. And the that, if I remember right, was from the actual man. Nagasaki bomb. That is we must shot have the Baker. Curse of nuclear weapons written into our DNA. Which is one of the most famous, I should say infamous, nuclear tests ever devised. I used to think that I could use science to help mankind. But the one that wound up getting used was me. Using science to help mankind. It's just in the movies. <laughs> That's enough crying. Pull yourself together. Where is Metal Gear? Where on this base are they keeping it? 
Now, here's the only part of this game that can get really tedious just because there's such an expositional dump Rex here. Is in the underground maintenance base. Where is that? North of the that I think they could tower, probably trim down about there. the emergency override maybe system for three the to five minutes of it yeah. and in the wouldn't overly control. impact the story. You'd better hurry. If they were planning a launch from the start, then their ballistic program is probably finished. And since they haven't called for me in a few hours, they must not need me. In other words, they must be ready to launch. Meryl's got the detonation code override keys. We'll link up with her. If we can't override the launch, we'll have to destroy Rex. Yep. One or one way or another, that twenty-ton beastie's got to go. I'll show you the way. On that leg of yours, you'll just slow me down. You'll need me if you're going to destroy Rex. I don't need you. I just need your brain. I created Rex. It's my right, my duty to destroy him. If you get a chance, try to escape. When the coast is clear, I'll contact you by codec. How am I supposed to escape from an island? Uh, okay. You so got a boy then? there. I want you to hide somewhere and keep me informed. You know this place well, don't you? Of course I do. And don't worry, I've got this. the same stealth technology as the ninja. Foxhound was going to use them, but with this I'll be fine. Bad leg and all. Good. Now, at but some point towards the end of the game, too. or once you finish the game, and what it's basically new game plus mode, you are able to Meryl, get that stealth camouflage. Okay. That's a relief. I want you to look after him. Where are you now? Very close. There she is! Over there! <gasps> oh no! Damn, they've spotted me! <laughs> Meryl! What happened? So now I gotta go Something's find wrong. her. Did you hear something? Wasn't that some kind of music? What did she look like? She... She was wearing the same green uniform as the terrorists. A disguise? She has such a cute way of walking. She kind of wiggles her behind. You were really looking. Well, she's got a very cute behind. Thank Way you, Hideo. Huh? Unfortunately, that's another thing about this series that has not aged well, is that Hideo she Kojima, you can say what you want about him as a conceptual alone, designer huh? and and There's as an idea man, sure but herself. a lot of the content Where's in that? this series, so when it comes to, especially when it comes to the female characters, both Here, enemy and allied, card. Uh, would it's not pass the Bechdel four. test on its best day, let alone the general common sense test. You're not in pain, are you? Huh? You feel okay? Nothing bothering you? What's wrong? Getting all friendly all of a sudden. No, nothing. I'm glad you're okay. You're strange. I'm a little nervous. Everyone else I've saved suddenly dies. You're bad luck. Forget it, doctor. Call me Otacon. Otacon? It stands for Otaku Convention. And Otaku's a guy like me who likes Japanimation. Japan was the first country to successfully make bipedal robots. They're still the best in the field of robotics. And I have to admit, part of that, the, the appeal for this game as well, was that I grew up being a massive anime junkie, especially when it came to, to anime weapons. that involved mecha That's and robots of all say. sorts. Uh, so, and this is an actual like the ones in the anime that, animals. if I remember right, it's called Robonaut, or uh, Police Knots is what it's called. Just but they were actually like able to get the footage me. from that anime and be able to put a clip or two into it, into this part right. of the game. We have to take responsibility. Science has always thrived on war. Greatest weapons of mass destruction were created by scientists who wanted to be famous. But that's all over now. I won't take part in murder anymore. Whatever. All I want from you is information. Sure. I know everything about this whole base. Ask me anything about Rex or about this place. Also, with this stealth camouflage, I can sneak in and out of the armory and mess hall. If you need ammo or rations, just tell me and I'll bring them to you. Which is in part why the ninja battle is so difficult. Is because once you unlock Otacon you and you have that capacity for him to bring you ammunition and rations, if you take him up on it and you're in a position where you can ping him on Kodak and have him bring it to you, he'll do it and you'll be able to get quite a bit. 
which is quite helpful. So let me make sure if there's anything else we need to get around here. I don't think there is. So we've taken care of Gray Fox. We've identified him for what he is. We were able to have our conversation with Otacon. We got the level four card. Now we've got to be able to go and find Meryl. So in the next episode, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to have to head back up, likely to basement level one or somewhere else in the building and track her down. But we are way over time for how long I thought this episode was going to go, thanks to the expositional dump we got at the end. But in the meantime, my name is Ronan. If you've been enjoying the content, best way to show it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and ring the bell to be notified of new episodes as they drop. And we will talk to you in the next one as we carry on with our revisitation of Metal Gear Solid. Bye.